Next, Dom's attention turns to the currently non-turning pointer on top of the vane. Are you nervous? But a century of weather exposure means it's a tough nut to crack. Wow. It's great news that this is off. I'm so pleased. Actually, a lot of the mechanics of this pivot point is going to be able to be reused, which is really great news. I'm really pleased with that. Dom can now begin rebuilding the weather vane. Welding on his newly forged scrolls. With the steel sections now intact, Dom can begin cleaning up the copper elements of the vein, hidden under a hundred years of tarnish. They've got this beautiful patina of all this verdigris on it, which is like an oxidization, which is just a natural thing that occurs with copper when it's exposed to the elements. But having the copper letters gleaming and shipshape means a certain lack of direction is all the more obvious. Dom needs to recreate an E that will look A-OK -okay alongside the other three markers. Luckily, my degree is in graphic design, so I've actually spent a good few years working with typefaces and, and typography. So taking as much information as I can from the existing letters to recreate a matching E. That's fantastic. I think that sits really nicely alongside, alongside the original letters. I've now just got to give that quick polish so the sheen level matches what I've done to the originals, far around the edges. But other than that, I think it's going to look great. It's almost time to fit it. But having all four directions is pointless without a pointer. With the copper arrow also now gleaming, it can be soldered back onto the central shaft. But with his area of expertise lying more in the welding of steel and iron, Dom has called upon Steve. Hey, Steve. Who's more used to the delicate soldering of precious metals. All right, let's get it all into position. This is a sort of fairly critical point. If the pieces are not perfectly aligned, the newly soldered joins will break when the wedges and clamps are removed. You're a bit low. This is a bit of a fiddly job. I'm glad yeah. you're here to help. Oh, oh Steve. There we go. Oh, that's... Mm -hmm. Does that mean spot on? No, that means <laughs> almost. <laughs> almost. <laughs> OK. Happy if you are. Yeah. yeah. So let's give it a whirl. Not the easiest of soldering jobs. No, I'm glad I didn't attempt it on my own. <laughs> Thank you. That's great. All right, leave it with you. Thanks so much, Steve. Dom's poured hours of hard work into the renovation. A huge item and one of the most damaged pieces he's ever faced. He's painted the nearly intact structure to replicate the original shade. And he's now gilding accents with gold leaf. So I'm aware that weather vane's going back outside once it gets back to the church. For that reason, I've decided to use 23 karat gold, which it won't tarnish, basically. Anything less, 18 carats or any other, any other silvers and coppers would all tarnish with the, with the weather. Working on projects like this, it's been so long thinking and planning and researching. I really do become quite attached to them, and I just, I, I think it's really worth just going this extra mile, just putting the gold leaf on. It's just, it's really gonna, do it justice.